Hello, Scott here. So back in version 40 of Xlights, I added a new option called the Apply Settings option to the key bindings. And I kind of want to explain um, my intent behind that and how to use this to make sequencing faster. So in Xlights right now, if you wanted to, uh, so let's say you wanted to add a specific effect or a specific setting to different types of effects as you're sequencing. So Let's say we're putting down bars effects, and then we're putting down a butterfly effect. And we want to, as we put them down, we want to also maybe add a fade of one second to them. So currently, the easiest way to do this, in my opinion, is to you know lay down all the effects, and then you would select them all, and then do a bulk edit. But what if you wanted like a faster way to do this on the fly, kind of like as a preset? Like I want to be able to set my effect down. Instead of having to go up here fumbling around, I can just hit a keyboard shortcut and add that add one second fade a lot quicker. So that was kind of the intent behind when I added this apply setting keyboard option. So you can basically make a keyboard shortcut that does a adds a one second a one second fade to whatever effect is selected. So that that was kind of and you can do it basically with any setting in here. Because if you know how Xlights works, these uh, effects, there's actually string type settings that are behind the scenes in your XML file, in your sequence XML file. And that's how we describe these settings. So to add these keyboard shortcuts, you have to manually edit your key bindings file currently. So I recommend if you're gonna do that, you need a editor like Notepad++. And then you can change these keyboard settings. So to do this apply setting, you have to know the setting you're trying to represent in like the string format. And there's a couple ways you can do that, figure that out. But the easiest is by far just copying the effect in Xlights and then going into like Notepad++ and pasting the settings. And this will show you the effect settings as the raw string values. So Let's take an effect that I want to do this on. So the easiest one to do, because it has the least amount of settings, is the on effect. So I would just take the on effect. And then if you come up here and put like a fade of one. Now if you copy this, go back to Notepad here and paste, you can see it's an on effect. And here's the setting we care about, the text control fade in of one. So this is basically telling Xlights to populate that box up there with a value of one. So what I can do with this is then in my key bindings, put that setting in there. So first thing we have to do is Xlights always will edit the key binding when you close it. So you gotta do all this editing of Xlights or all these editing of the key bindings file with Xlights closed. So let's say we have the setting that we wanna do. We'll just close Xlights here. If I go back to the key bindings, you see this pop up. This is basically saying Xlights edited the file while I had it open in Notepad here. Just reload it. So if you look at the key bindings here, each one of these lines is a keyboard shortcut in here. So there are some that don't have any shortcuts tied to them. They're just kind of in here for reference. But if you look, I'm going to copy this one here, and it's actually a key binding for the on effect. So if you we're going to use this as kind of reference to write our own key binding. So in the XML file here, if you look, the format, there's basically like a header and a footer for each one of these settings. And in the header, there's attributes is what they call them. So there's an attribute called key code, which is basically what keyboard shortcut you want this to go for. So I'm going to say it's for the one key. And then there's some options here if you want it to be like Alt, Control, or Shift. So basically, if you want it to hold your Alt key, then hit one for this key binding to react, that's what you would change these settings here. So Shift and all those. So the type of key binding, you can do, there's a huge list in here of all the different types you can do. You can do effects, where this actually imports an effect. But the new one I added is called Apply Setting. So if I go in here and change the type to apply setting, and then this attribute is for the type of effect, which we don't have when we're doing an apply setting. You just delete that, 
And then now we have the version of X lights, just leave the default that was in there. And then between these two chevrons, there's a setting you want to manipulate. So um, by default, here's the settings for like the on effect, but let's take the setting that we want to change. So earlier here, we identified this is the fade in setting that we care about. Now between these two brackets, just paste that in. And now you can see here we have a key binding. So when we hit one, it should apply this as setting of a fade one. So let's save our key bindings here. And then we'll fire up X lights again. So when X lights load, do you make it that key binding error that you've seen sometimes when you do an upgrade? But uh, since I edited it correctly, I saw no error. So just do a quick sequence here. Okay, so now in my sequencer, I can put down like a bars effect. Put down a butterfly. Uh, put down just some random X here. So now if I want to quickly just add that fade to it, let's open our layer blending. I can just hit the one key on my keyboard and you'll see it added the fade to the effect. So I can just keep pressing the one key on all these effects and you can see now it has that fade up there. So that's kind of a quick way you can do it. Um, it should work. This pretty much should work with any setting. It would also work for effects settings but um, like if you want to do your layer setting here, so let's say you love to make your layers, your sub buffer here, you like to make it a very specific value. You can actually go in here and edit it. And let's say if I want it to be 75, 25, 25, 75, that's my setting I like. If I do the same thing, copy, delete the old paste buffer. But now if you see there's a setting in here called B custom sub buffer and it has those values that I kind of just put in. So we can do the same thing. Let's close X lights. We can go back to that key bindings. We got the same pop up because X lights touched the file basically again. So now I can go in here, add a new key bindings again. I can put it as number two. This is the settings we copied out of the copy paste buffer. Just grab that, I hit control C to copy it. We'll paste that in there. So now we basically have custom sub buffer setting and our key binding. So if I save that, if I fire up X lights again. Should be able, should do the same thing. It'll parse this uh, key bindings file. And if you have any errors, it'll pop up. Now we can open the sequencer again, open a new, just create a generic sequence. And then now I put my butterfly down. Right now you can see the default sub buffer is full. And if I hit the two key, it uh, shrunk it down to that setting I put in. And then one has my fade in there. So I could program, you know, fade one, fade in, fade, in, fade out with one or two, put different keyboard shortcuts. And that's kind of a quicker way that you can add settings or you can change settings how you want as you sequence. So uh, yeah, that's kind of the, the crux of what I added and um, Hopefully someone can use it and find some power in it. So uh, uh, thanks for watching.